Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are checking out ENTT, or Entity, which makes it one of the cleverest names I have covered yet on this channel. This is a header-only C++ library for creating games, specifically it implements the ECS, or Entity Component System, part of why I find that name so clever. Now when I said we are going to be checking this out, I kind of lied, because this is like one of my favorite kind of videos, I didn't make it. This is actually a guest video from someone on the Game From Scratch Discord servers. By the way, if you have not checked them out, do so. Great place, a lot of uh, game engine agnostic game development talk, great place to hang out and go. Uh, but what we're talking about here is Xenobrain. Um, he is an excellent technical poster on the Game From Scratch Discord, pop in and say hi, but he is going to walk you through the merits, the strengths, and the joy of using Entity. So without further ado, here is Xenobrain. Hi, this is Zenobrain from Game From Scratch's Discord, and today I wanted to talk about the NTT library, which is an MIT licensed C++ library primarily for ECS, or Entity Component System Programming, but actually has a lot of other neat stuff in it that can help accelerate your projects. ECS is a more data-oriented and higher performance way to structure your entity composition, separating out the component's data from the functions that operate on that data. This allows those functions to operate on a bunch of components' data altogether, rather than a traditional entity component structure which calls functions on each component individually. This is actually a huge performance win, and it can even be an organizational win too, since systems aren't tied one-to-one -to, -one to the components they operate on. This allows systems to more cleanly describe their intended purpose, conceptually separate from any individual component. For more on this subject, check into Unity's underdevelopment DOTS system, which is based around this concept. Entity isn't the only ECS library around, so what makes it special? Performance, of course, features, and its API. Entity gives you a lot of ways to access your components. There's views, which are the most basic. You can then use a callback, a range for, an iterator, And it also supports structured bindings. That's a C17 feature. There are also groups, which are pretty similar in usage, but change how components get stored in memory to optimize access for specific systems. So you can for, trade a little bit of complexity for increased performance when you need it. The library is also dipping into reactive programming, uh, where systems can request only the components that have changed for even more performance. Uh, for example, what they have here is uh, they replace the transform instead of mutating it. And um, actually, that is not a performance problem, because in a transform, you're actually basically updating all the data anyway. So um, what that does is that then triggers an event, internal event in the library that says that the component's been updated. And this collector here um, is able to collect those, and therefore you can access only the transforms that you actually need to look at that have changed. So I've mentioned performance, and you may be asking, so just how fast is this thing? Well, most benchmarks aren't worth the pixels they're printed on, um, so you do have to be very careful with those. But pretty much any benchmarks that you'll find are going to show that NTT is at or very near the top. Um, in this particular benchmark, you can see that when it's using the group, um, it's at the very top, and even when it's not, it's otherwise very, very performant. So again, be careful with benchmarks. There's a lot of ways that they can lead to deceptive conclusions, but the short version is that the performance of entity is not going to be what holds back your project. So what else can it do? It's actually got a very nice event system. Um, it all starts with the delegate, which is uh, basically a stand-in for std function, uh, which you would find in the STL. This one does have the advantage, though, that in a lot of cases it can avoid any memory allocation. Building on this is a signal slot system. And what that lets you do is that let, it lets you specify multicast delegates, so you can bind multiple delegates to the sync here. 
Building on the delegates is a signal slot system. And what that lets you do is that essentially is a multicast delegate. And this allows you to bind the function with the instance, so you don't have to specify the instance when calling the delegate, and invoke multiple delegates together. Next up is the dispatcher, and the advantage of this one is that you don't have to specify your event types ahead of time. And furthermore, you can enqueue the events up, um, so and then you can actually trigger them all at once later. So it's designed to be used inside of a loop. But you can, if you do need to trigger it immediately, there's that function there. And finally, there's the emitter, which is interesting. What you do is you der you derive a uh, from the emitter base class. Um, this is uh, using curiously recurring template pattern, by the way, to devirtualize the function call. And what's interesting about that is that when you say emitter dot on, and then you didn't have to specify what this was or register it with the emitter ahead of time, um, and it triggers a lambda. And what's interesting there is that the parameter to the lambda is, of course, the event. That's, that's your event data there. But it also has the emitter reference. And that allows you to um, actually, once this event has been triggered, um, to immediately trigger another one because you have a reference to the emitter there. Um, and so this is a uh, up on is trigger it uh, every time the event happens, and once is, uh, as you would suspect, um, only do it one time, and then remove as itself as a listener. Next up is the poly part of the library. Um, what's interesting about this, this is another uh, performance tool, essentially, um, and what it allows you to do is instead of having to inherit from interfaces, it allows you to essentially just call, for example, draw directly on the class, uh, rather than having to have, you know, circle inherit from a, a drawable interface. Um, and that's a, that's a performance win because you're not having to deal with, with devirtualization. And also is, um, it can be a bit cleaner as well, simply because, again, you're not having to deal with interface classes that uh, add some unneeded cruft. Next up is the resource manager. Uh, this is quite simple, but incredibly useful. So I wanted to spend a little more time looking at this one. This is a their basic example on the wiki, but I wanted to show something a little meatier, so I wrote one real quick. So basically the first thing I'm doing here is I'm actually importing entity literals, but I'll cover that in a minute. Um, so I've created a texture resource that wraps an SDL texture pointer and stores a width and a height. I have defined a texture loader, and again, you'll notice that NTT is making use of the curiously recurring template pattern. And then we have a load function that takes the path, uh, the SDL renderer, because we'll need to use that in order to actually create the SDL texture, and it returns a shared pointer to the texture resource. These are just a couple um, constants here to define the formats that we're going to be using. And um, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, we load the image data, we create the surface, we create the texture from the surface, uh, we clean up if something went wrong, we clean up uh, if something went right, um, and finally we return a shared pointer to the texture resource. Uh, and uh, I am using a custom deleter here um, so that we can call SDL destroy texture, and then of course cleaning up the actual class. Um, just part of the NTT components here, uh, we've got a transform component, it's a simple XY, the texture component's got the resource handle to the texture resource, and I'll show you in a second how we're going to access that. Um, create a window, create a render, create a registry, create the texture cache, you'll notice that it's typed by resource. Uh, we're going to create a sprite real quick, and then we do the sprite texture. Um, and then we specify the, the loader that we're going to use for that. And um, this is a identifier. It's a hash string. That's the, the uh, literal that I was talking about earlier. You could type out the, all this here if you wanted to, hash string, but the literal is quite nice. This is, of course, the path, and we do have to pass back a pointer to the renderer. 
And then what we're doing is we're emplacing, which means uh, create in place um, the texture component on the sprite. And uh, this is, of course, a texture. Now we could have just called this and just plopped it right in here. But specifically, I wanted to be able to access the sprite texture when creating the transform. So that's why I separated them out. And of course, this is uh, just centering the sprite on the window. And typical event loop cleared cornflower blue. It has to be cornflower blue. Um, that's the rule. Uh, and then we're just got to, this could be a system um, that says, uh, you know, void draw all sprites, but I just declared it inline for simplicity. Um, we're creating a view. Um, that's very cheap to do, by the way. You should basically do that every frame. Um, and then we're grabbing the texture and component and the transform. Uh, we're capturing a pointer to the renderer in the lambda here, because we will need that. Um, here's where we grab the texture, and it will should show us the type here if we hover over it. Yeah, you can see it's a, it's a texture resource. And what we're doing here is um, we're basically are doing the render copy. This is a, of course pointer to the renderer. This is the this is the texture. This is the source rectangle. Um, this is a null because the way that SDL works is uh, you would specify your rectangle here for what you wanted to clip out of a sprite sheet, and this is a destination rectangle, and that is an x y width at height. And we're grabbing the x and a y from the transform component, and we're grabbing the width and height from the texture. And then finally, we are drawing it. And when we run it, we get a happy little Kenny alien. And there's also a simple service locator um, that allows you to wire up implementations um, of these interfaces at runtime. Um, Nice to have, but don't abuse it. It is a singleton in disguise. All right, NTT and Unreal Engine. Um, well, this is interesting uh, because it shows how Entity can be layered on top of Unreal Engine 4, but it's still bottlenecked underneath by Unreal's architecture. So don't go in thinking that it's something like use this library to replace Unreal's Entity system and get 1,000 times more performance. Uh, that's not the story here, but it could definitely be useful in specific situations where you can minimize calling into UE4 to update state. Finally, there are a bunch of internal utilities used by the Entity library itself. You definitely uh, should take a look at these because there's uh, pretty useful stuff. For example, uh, unique sequential identifiers, hash strings, monostate, that's a, a singleton for configuration variables, basically. Uh, definitely some interesting little things here that uh, you, know, you may not want to have to write yourself. So now that we've covered what's in the library, who is using it? Well, there's Minecraft. Presumably that is Minecraft Bedrock Edition. So that's definitely battle tested. Uh, and this isn't officially confirmed, but it seems Ubisoft and Larian are both cooking up something with it. It's also quite possible that there's some more AAA usage as well. There's also a healthy number of indie engines using it and plenty of example projects. Uh, by the way, I would recommend starting with Entity Breakout and Entity Pong. I would also like to point out Skipjack's blog. He's got a really interesting series called ECS Back and Forth that examines a lot of the design decisions that went into creating the entity library. So you may be asking, how do I get this thing? One easy way to do it is you go to single include and here's the entity file all smushed together and you can just copy paste that into your project. There's no external dependencies. There's no configuration. It's ready to drop it right in. And you can also grab it from Conan, VCPKG, Build2, and the macOS Homebrew Package Manager. So plenty of ways to easily drop it into your project. Finally, for getting help with using the library, there's a Gitter channel and a very lively Discord server. So that's NTT. Definitely worth a look if you're doing C++ game development. Thanks for watching.